morning everyone i am setting tinky's eyes i haven't put her lashes in yet i'm actually going to root her lashes with her eyes in she has a pretty thick eyelid so i'm not too worried about it and these are glass eyes so it's not like the needle's going to scratch them i don't like to put eyes in first before but i think that's what's going to happen just because i want to give this glue some time to set it's going to take a while and there's going to be a ton of it in there because these are huge vintage glass eyes they're super heavy they have a stem and i also set them in a way that is probably not the way the eyes were intended to go in so I have to be super careful to get them glued in or I'm going to go through a lot of work and have to take a head apart and reset eyes. I just don't want to fight eyes. So a lot of glue. And that's what she's looking. Isn't that awesome? And I checked her eye shines. They seem to be both in about the same place. One eye is a little higher than the other. That's okay. That's normal. And um, I haven't varnished her either makes me a little nervous just because I don't want to get varnish on those eyes, but they're glass. If I do, I can peel it off, but I'm going to get her varnish today. And then I am going to start rooting these babies. I'm not rooting whole heads. Most of you know, I'm not a big fan of rooting whole heads. I made it my goal this year to really attempt to improve my rooting skills. And I am, you know, little by little, but these babies, none of them are getting a full head of hair. It's just not, it's not the vibe, I don't think, for these guys. I think if I'm going to do like a super hyper realistic real born, then I will root a whole head. But for these guys, it just, I'm just having fun. And so I was on the fence about putting eyebrows on her and I went ahead and did it. And I'm not sure if you can see them very well. But I looked at a couple of other Tinkies and I did like the ones that had eyebrows. I'm not the like eyebrow whisperer around here. So hopefully they look okay. Good morning, everyone. I am up bright and early before everyone else in my family. That won't last long. And I am cleaning up this gigantic mess. I don't think you can see it. Let me lower this camera a bit. This is the hairy mess you make when you're rooting. But I thought I would chat while I was tidying up and show you the babies because they're all rooted and ready to go. And some of them need some eyelash trimming. And I am super picky about tidying up because mohair is so expensive. Now, if I were a normal person, I would probably do this very carefully and one baby at a time and tidy up between babies but you know when I get on a roll I just kind of explode it just go into a, a rooting frenzy so that means cleanup is tough for me I keep all my mohair in these little bags I love them they have little clouds all over them and every color has a bag and I tend to write what color it is, if it's wavy or straight, you know, the texture of the hair where I got it. Now that doesn't mean the right hair always goes back into the right bag, unfortunately, but I do my best, especially if I mix hair. Sometimes I'll mix two colors if I'm not getting the color hair that I want. And I've pretty much mixed my paint so that it's predictable for me, but that's not always, and that's not always right on. So sometimes I'll get a color paint that I played with and I can't seem to match the mohair to it. So I have to mix mohair. It sure is easier to mix paint than mohair, but you know, sometimes things happen the way they happen. I love this. Look at this mohair. This is that baby, baby, baby fine mohair. 
Now it, it is so pretty and it's not difficult to root. The problem is that um, it's so fine that it kind of lays down. This is like really great for newborn, newborn, newborn hair because it does that lay down thing, you know. Um, this batch of babies, I combi rooted and I, I like the hair to have a little body, which is why I'm combi rooting in the first place. Just because when you paint, the hair is so flat and one dimensional and I like to give it a little lift. Now it's not easy. I make, I'm been told that I make things sound a little easier than they are. And I don't mean to do that on purpose. You have to be careful when you're combi rooting. And I'm saying that just, just because I have an aversion to some types of combi rooting. And when I was first starting, I didn't like it at all. And I didn't think I would ever do it because I thought, ugh, this looks like a really, really bad mohawk on a baby. Now, when my kids were little, they all had what we would call the Wito. And I know that's a funny mirror. It means this. I did all this to my kids. They all got this like little Gerber curl up top. And it's because my kids tended to have less hair here and a fuller head here. A lot of babies do. And so I would take this longer hair up and do this thing. And it was like when they were nursing, I would be doing this. It's just a habit I had with all my kids. I think as moms, we all have our own little thing. And so when I was going to combi root, my voice is groggy. I um, just got up a little bit ago and I haven't had any tea. So my vocal cords are super dry. You know, I just didn't like this super flat drawn on look here and then a big puff of hair up here. It looked kind of odd to me. Got it. And it was just me following my painting. I think that's what made things work better. And if you don't groom it according to that pattern, it can look funny. Like I've seen babies arrive to clients and I try to style and put a little bit of gel in their hair so it's not too difficult when they arrive and I put a little hair net on. But you know what happens with box head, you know, babies will arrive traveling. Now I know that once I deliver a baby, it can look any way they want it to. But the way it's intended to look is if you look down deep there, you can see my original painting so that the mohair looks exactly like the painted hair. And the curl is going in the right direction. Now that might not be somebody's bag. They might get this baby and decide to put a big cheerleader bow in or brush it straight up or not brush it at all or just flop a hat on top. You know, that's, that's not in my control. But if you do like the way that it's styled and you want to repeat that, you know, it's like when you go to the hairdresser and your hair looks super great when you leave and you're like, oh, I'm so happy I have this haircut. The next day you take a shower and the haircut doesn't look the same and you're like, oh, I can never get it the same. Well, this is kind of a cheat for that, if that's what you want. I'm not saying, you know, you need to or you have to, but that's the way the hair was rooted and intended to go. So it's just like this. Look at those ears, aren't they cute? Now these were experimental ears, I think I said before, because this baby and Mr. Baby here um, had experimental ears. They're, you know, not where I want them, uh, quality wise I think they're really cute and I think they look nice however I know where my mistakes were and I'll get them right next time so these babies will be priced even though they're super cute and great babies their price will reflect the fact that they had um, ears that I ears that I was kind of experimenting with and I'm going to work that clay a little bit and see how see how it goes before I talk about it or promote it or tell everybody to go out and buy it because I, don't, I tend to get super excited in the beginning if it's going well and then I tend to kind of forget that it took me a while to get to that place and I don't want to lead anybody down the wrong road until I'm sure for me at my price point even though I know a lot of people are not happy that a lot of artists have been pushing their prices up um, and what I see, and you know, I could be wrong, but the newbies see us raising our prices and they think, oh, so this is what everybody's getting for a reborn now. And then they hike their prices up 
and people may not be happy with the quality of doll they're getting. I know that stuff is expensive and I know that when you start off, you get stars in your eyes and you think, I'm gonna sell a baby and take my family on vacation. That's kind of not how it goes. You need to build your skills. You need to gain trust. You need to build a client base. You have to figure out your style. And I say this like a broken record because we just deal with this all the time. And I can't even tell you how many times on a doll forum, a new person will say, can you take a look at my dolls and tell me what I'm doing wrong? I mean, um, I've had this baby listed for three weeks. It will not sell. And I invested so much money and I paid this much money for this and this much money for that. And I don't understand all these other people, you know, are asking 500, 600, 900, $1,400 for a doll and all I want is a measly, you know, $500 for this baby and I'll look at it and it's very obvious this person has made maybe three babies in their entire life. Now, you might be super proud of yourself. I mean, you, you should be, yay, you did this thing, but there are other people who've been doing it a really long time and it put in a lot of money, um, not just in supplies, but they've you know, been perfecting their craft for a while and they have taken classes and they've gone to workshops and they've gone to doll shows and they've watched the demos and they've spent hours and hours on YouTube and on forums asking questions and trying new things and learning. I have all know. the stuff and I, and I wanna do this and I've, I've done one and it was nice and now I'm ready for prime time. You know, just relax, go slow, have a good time. This is meant to be super fun. Figure it out. And if you're good at it, you're good at it. And hang out your shingle once you are. And some people won't be. Not that the babies you make won't be precious or wonderful to you or a lot of fun and hard work. It just means that straight out of the gate, you might not be making $1,400 dolls. That's a hard place for some people to come to, especially when you get excited and you invest so much money. You know, this is a very expensive hobby. Um, if there are ways to do it inexpensively for fun, I'm not sure for profit, but for fun. And I think if you start off doing it pretty inexpensively and just goof around, then little by little, buy, you know, a, a sculpt, Make that baby, see if you can sell that baby. Use that money to buy, you know, the money you make. You probably won't put that in your pocket. That's assuming that the babies you make have some appeal, you know? Um, what you like might not be something that somebody else likes, or it might be just the thing somebody else likes. You just never know. But you have to, to kind of listen to the feedback and, um, Adjust yourself if you can. Now that doesn't mean that, you know, everybody else is in control and you have to be a different artist than you are because somebody else gave you feedback. It means when you're asking your peers for feedback, which you should be doing, and you're seeing the same type of feedback over and over again, like, well, you know, maybe you might want to work on your skin tones a little bit. They're a little ashy or they're a little gold. You tone it down a bit. You take a look at yourself and you just adjust where you think you should, where it feels right. Especially if you're having trouble um, selling a baby. But, you know, I've seen babies that just don't even look near complete just because that person doesn't know that they're like 10 steps away from a baby that's done. It's not, it's not a speed race, it takes a while. I used to make babies a little bit faster than I'm making them now. I mean, now I'm putting out babies, the amount of babies in a month that I used to put out in two weeks. And that's because I wasn't doing as much and um, I had a heck of a lot more time with my son in school than I do now. I mean, I'm not getting 
four hours a day or six hours a day to work, I might get two or three hours a day if I'm lucky. And that doesn't mean that they're uninterrupted either. I am going to set her eyelashes up. I'm going to keep them on the longer side, but I can't trim them all the way because I added more and I wouldn't be able to set them. So I'm just going to put some sponges here. I may actually ship this baby with these with her foam eyes on. Some. I think this baby's eyes need to set a little bit. And remember to give credit where you can if you can remember, even if it's someone that you're not crazy about, um, but they do offer something of benefit to you. And I'm gonna say it for the eight millionth time, I sound like a broken record. There is a difference between being inspired by someone and just, just straight out copying them. Um, I think as a new artist, people will forgive you if you're copying a little bit because you're just learning. But after a while, you're gonna be expected to come to the table with your own stuff, you know? And the difference between inspiration and copying is you're learning from someone who has already gone before you, right? But then you branch off and then you have your own ideas and you make your own baby and you have your own style. And here is a good example. Um, so I am not the first person to modify ears. Lots of people have. I was inspired by modifying babies. I am not making the same ears that other people are making. I'm making my own ears. I might be using the same product as some other people, but these are my ears. They don't look like anybody else's ears. But the idea is, the inspiration was modify a baby. Now, I specifically, when I do this sculpt, put freckles on the baby, but, um, the Twisted Beanstalk, being from the Twisted Beanstalk, did make a fairy a long time ago with a spray of pretty little white freckles across this little fairy's face, and I thought it was adorable. So on some of my uh, circus babies, I took my brown freckles, because her and I don't do freckles the same, we don't make them the same way, but I was inspired by her idea of using the white for the freckles, so it's still my freckling my way of making freckles, but I did borrow the inspiration of using different colors to make freckles. Clown babies or circus babies. I am not the first person and I won't be the last person to make them. I just won't. They're a fun idea. But hopefully the way I'm doing it is original enough that when people see it, they know that that's my baby. You know, you could put 20 clown babies and you could say, oh, that's a Jody clown baby, that's a Twisted Beanstalk clown baby, and that's a St. Cloud Nursery Circus baby. I'm hoping. About, I don't get excited about customs at all. And in my head, I've got more ideas than I have time. And so I just kind of like to make, I like to bring those ideas to the surface for myself. It makes me happy. Yeah. That, for me, and this might be different for other people, but I happen to know a lot of artists, um, and we most, all mostly feel a, kind of the same, and that is you get this great idea. I mean, you might wake up with it, or it might just be floating around in your head for a long time, and you gather the things that you need, or you find and source the things that you need. You sketch it out. You make a plan. You have this picture in your head. Not everybody has this ability. Um, but some people do where you can clearly see the end result in your head. And I don't mean an idea of it. I mean, it is there in living color. It has already happened in your head. And in your head, you can kind of see how everything's going to fall into place. And, and if you're a person who is constantly changing your house around or, you know, you get an idea to redo a room or something, you might have experienced this in some way where... I will look at a room and I'll move all the pieces around in the room in my head and see how they fit and they work. 
And then I'll kind of paint it in my brain, like, ooh, pink, and ooh, this chair there, and these two tables here. This is going to be great. I'll get so worked up. I'll get so excited. I'll go out, buy the paint. I'll make the men folk come in and move the furniture. I can move my own furniture, but I can get them to help me, too. Um, I'd rather not break my pieces, and I'm always hurting myself. I get too excited. I'm not careful. And then all the time I'm, I'm thinking about this and like the mister or my sister or my friend will come in and they'll be see the mess and they'll say, how, how's that going to work? How do you know that's going to, that might, I don't think that'll fit. And I'll, and I'll be like, I've got this, I've got this. They can't see it in their head. They're like, I don't know how all of this chaos is going to turn into this thing. But in my head, it's, it's not chaos. I've got a plan. And so what happens is I make this gigantic mess. I've got paint, paint brushes, buckets, furniture all piled up in a corner. And then everything slowly comes together. And at the very end, you're cleaning and putting away and mopping and sweeping and adding the finishing touches. And it all comes together and you're like, woohoo! And they're like, I couldn't see that. I totally couldn't see where you were going with that. And so I, for me, making babies is and this is a big, 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 big circuitous route to an explanation, I apologize. But with making babies or any kind of art for me, it's the same it's thing. Sometimes I get there and it's not exactly the way I wanted it to be or it wasn't as exciting in person as it was in my head and I might make some changes. But for the most part, this is what I like doing. I like getting to hear on my own steam. And for me, customs, impedes that because I am working hard to try to make somebody else's noodle dream come to life and some people can do that and they like that because maybe you know they don't feel like the idea train but for me it will just slow me down it will just slow me down I have just way too many babies in my brain that I want to make let me show you the ear on this baby look at this you can see where the clay is on the head and it's not sealed up correctly. I've got an idea for working on that. I think that if this baby were purchased for a little kid, they would probably rip these ears off um, eventually. I think a grown-up would just be tender with them and make sure that they don't come off. I'm gonna have to figure that out. I'm gonna have to tweak that and the wheels are turning in my head and I'm saying, okay, I have an adhesive that I think will work. I have a Dremel with a tool on it and I may sand around that a little bit better. Um, you know, just little things. These Both of these ears aren't exactly the same, which I think is kind of cool, but that might bother somebody. Um, you know, and there'll be maybe three or four or five more of these babies that I make with these ears before I get them perfect. But I had an idea in my head. I saw this little face and I said, oh my God, this baby would be so cute as an elf. Wouldn't it be cute as an elf? And I, you know, would lay in bed at three o'clock in the morning when most people are worrying about other things. I'm worrying about hmm, bright eyes, pale eyes, make it look like this, add some freckles, add a horn, you know, that's the way my brain works. And you know, I know I'm not alone. I know some of you are watching this thinking, yeah, that's how my brain works. Yay. You know, you're my people. And then there are some people who are thinking, whoo, wee, she makes me want to take a deep breath and sit down and mop the sweat off my head and I don't know where she's coming from. How does she sleep at night with her boggly brain? That's cool too. We're all different.